Well, yeah. I just want to say big thanks to all of you. And I am, we're recording this. I'm really looking forward to hearing what your why is um, and what motivated you. I mean, you've got a thousand opportunities for MOC and QI work, um, but you chose this. Um, which I think is great for you guys, but I also think it's even better for your patients. And I'm just really excited to learn more about what brought you to this project. And we're super excited to have you on board. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Danny. Okay. So we wanted to just take a, um, some time for um, you to introduce yourselves, um, who I know we don't have all members necessarily of your team on the phone, but whomever is on the phone representing your practice. Um, and I had sent out kind of these uh, couple of questions that we wanted to hear from you about, which is what led you to choose, what led your practice to choose to do this project, something in your personal or professional life that drew you to this work. And then at the end of the project, what do you hope to have accomplished? Um, so I'm just gonna go down the list. Uh, we did have, like I mentioned, a couple of new practices, so they may not be on the line with us today, but I'll follow up with them as well and, and share their um, response to this question with all of you. So who do we have on the line from Pediatric Associates of Mount Carmel? Hi, Kristen, it's Jasmine, the office manager and MJ, our front office coordinator. Hi, thank you both for joining us. So if you wouldn't mind to um, answer those, those questions for us. Yeah, so um, we chose this project because we felt gun safety is a huge issue in our country and that our doctors felt this project would be beneficial to our patients and families, even if we can make a small difference. And then the second part was just at the end, what, what do you, what does your practice hope to have accomplished? So our goal is that even when the, um, the project itself at the end of February, 2023, that these discussions will become part of like the doctor's routine and that they will continue to have them and continue to provide those resources for the families. Great, thank you so much. Um, Children's Anderson Primary Care. Hi, it's Dr. Kerwin. Um, so I'm interested, I got us interested in this project because we have been part of Children's in a relatively short period of time. And since in that two years, we've been doing depression screening at all the checkups for 12 and up. And, and we do some suicide screening, not routinely, but I'm interested in that piece too. And I just kind of want to answer the question, now what? Um, because, you know, we're finding kids that are thinking about it, finding a lot of kids thinking about it. And it's so like... We have a behavioral health specialist in the office, but it seems like my depressed kids always come in at the end of the day when she's not here. And so now what? And so I wanna answer that question and I'm hoping by the end of February that all of the providers in the practice will have an answer to now what and be comfortable with talking about restricting lethal means. Great, thank you so much. Associated Pediatrics. Yeah, hi, this is Brad Fuller. I'm one of the pediatricians. I uh, was interested in this project really for the reason that was shown in Dr. Denny's first couple of slides there, just because this is one of the leading causes of death in our patients. And, you know, especially uh, knowing the uh, public health crisis that gun violence is in this country, you know, whatever we can do to help with that, I think is important. And then by the end of it, I just hope that, you know, screening for suicidality and, um, you know, having these conversations is, is just a routine part of our, our checkups. Great, thank you. Fairfield Primary Care. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hardy. I'm a um, big QI collaborative junkie. I just feel like any time that I'm not hanging out with Kristen and Haley is just a sad time in my life. So um, they just do such a fantastic job and we always end up learning a lot from them. Um, we've been trying at um, Fairfield, we're part of Cincinnati Children's, but we're trying to really sort of move discussion of um, adolescent mental health and means reduction uh, from any sort of like stigma as just being a very routine part of care. Mm -hmm. And so we always talk to our, um, to like our team members um, that, you know, teenagers are really the same as toddlers. They, uh, you know, they have no impulse control. They listen to the same music over and over. They put everything in their mouth. So just like we would talk about using cabinet locks for a little kid, we need to talk about lock boxes for the big kids. And just like we have our behavior specialist talk about tantrums and toilet training. Now we've got our behavior specialist talking about, you know, screen time and sleep and things they can do to build resiliency and like seeking help when they need it. 
So this is a, a great way for us to be able to kind of expand that because we haven't been doing the, uh, the ask just the PHQ-9. So we're looking forward to trying that out and seeing if that, how that's going to help with that. Right, and um, to let you all know, Dr. Hardy did participate in a pilot project for this work. So <clears throat> we're really happy to have her because she's got a lot of um, experience and can share a lot of um, you know hands-on learning and knowledge. So thank you again for joining us, Dr. Hardy. And then Medina Family and Internal Medicine and Pediatrics. Hi, it's Dr. Hummel. Um, so I participated in a QI project with you guys a couple years ago. So I get these reminders. And when I saw this one, I thought <clears throat> it looked like a really worthwhile um, project. And we do we do the PHQ-9 for adults. We're a family practice. So I do internal medicine and pediatrics. My partner's a pedi uh, family practice doctor and um, we're working towards expanding that work to kids. Um, we hadn't been doing the PHQ-9 in teenagers like on a regular basis or the ASQ. So I think um, expanding that work and kind of standardizing it for our 12 and up is a good is the goal for us so that everybody gets the same screenings. Mm. Wonderful, thank you. And then do we happen to have anyone from Fisher Titus Pediatrics in Norwalk? Yes, this is Paul Winnick, um, one of the three pediatricians here. Um, we have been doing uh, depression screening um, uh, for a little while now, uh, but we have not been doing uh, suicide screening. I think it's very important um, to do that as well, especially after uh, listening to uh, Dr. Denny. And so we look forward to uh, trying to incorporate that uh, screening in our uh, office practice here. Um, at the end of the project, we hope that uh, we'll definitely reduce the number of uh, suicide attempts in our area. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. And I will follow up with you um, to kind of get us caught up since we haven't had a chance to like formally have our kickoff call. So, but we're so excited to have you. Um, and then do, um, Dr. Lazaron and her team at the Christ Hospital. Hi there, this is uh, David Strano, I'm an intern um, in Christ Hospital Family Medicine Residency. So intern class, uh, we're passionate about this. This is a really timely issue um, with the epidemic of gun violence in our country um, and worsening mental health for our youth uh, throughout the COVID pandemic. So very passionate about it. and. Overall, just goal is to just get screening and appropriate interventions to be uh, more commonplace and standardized in our clinic. Wonderful. Well, we're so happy to have all of you. Thank you. Mercy Health Anderson. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Wade Rankin. I'm the program director for the residency program here at Mercy Health and Anderson. Uh, to, for our sake, this actually fills two uh, needs or requests. Uh, one, we have integrated behavioral medicine and being able to to integrate behavioral medicine specialists in our practice even more seamlessly with pediatrics is, is gonna be really important for us. And then the second part is the quality improvement projects that uh, can, can flow from the work that we're doing uh, to actually educate the residents on, on how to make dedicated changes to practice that, that are lasting and, and mean something. So at the end of the project, we wanna be able to basically integrate suicide screening as well as uh, depression screening into every well visit for um, pediatric patients over the age of 12. So um, it's, a, it's a great time for us and we're really excited to join the program. Wonderful, thank you. Fisher Titus Family Medicine in Wakeman. Hi, good afternoon, it's Chris Canfield. Um, we have three uh, primary care or family practitioners in our clinic and, um, and an APP as well. And I'm actually part of the Fisher Titus Pediatrics and Fisher Titus Medicine Mile, and we're all part of one group. And so these other practices decided to come on board. Like just yesterday, I kind of shook and rattled the cage a bit. <laughs> it, interestingly enough, um, I'm going to be the person who's out there saying that the first reason I looked at this is because I need a QI improvement project for my maintenance of certification for my board status. And I'm um, and I have a student this this uh, year in a really novel program where she the third year student following with me the entire year. Um, and she also needed a QI improvement project. And, and this thing just popped up right away. And we both thought this was great. You know, something that's meaningful because there's nothing worse than doing a meaningless QI improvement project just because you have to. 
Um, and on a more personal note, a very close family um, uh, of mine, a uh, fun family friend of mine um, had a uh, at either accidental death or suicide, who knows? He was 12 years old with a handgun um, just in the last year. So this really hits home. We also are blessed with a community of um, people who don't see the gun issue as, as it is, so to speak. And any attempt that we make often is, is, is uh, to, to talk about gun safety, uh, we get a lot of flack from our patients because of the culture of our county. Um, so I'm hoping through this process, we can learn some um, ways to have those discussions in a less threatening manner. We're not taking away your rights to have guns, et cetera, but let's go back and look at the number of children in our community who have died you know, by lethal means in the last couple of years. And you know, even though we're small, we've got those numbers out there. So we're what started out to be just my goodness I need a quality improvement project is turning into something that's you know really we've got a lot of our practices on board they think it's very pertinent you know our, our community health assessment done by our health department points to suicide as our one of our top issues to deal with so we hope to at the end of this absolutely incorporate this as a routine so that we're paying more attention to this and and hoping to maybe consolidate some of our behavioral health resources in a more organized fashion for our for our providers so we appreciate the opportunity to participate in this for multiple reasons wonderful thank you and thank you for rattling the cages we, we really appreciate that as well um, new carlisle family medicine I think we may have had an illness there today. So we will move on to Zoom Health Barberton. Hi, I'm John Edwards. Um, we're a family medicine residency training program. I'm actually pinch hitting today. Um, we're blessed to have on our faculty a full-time uh, behavioral health professional um, who really has a passion for pediatric mental health. And so she was the one that made us aware of this project and has, has been our champion, but unfortunately she's ill today. Um, you know, I'm going to echo some of what my colleagues said. Part of this was um, we live in a part of the state where gun ownership is prevalent and part of the culture. Um, and then, you know, I, I think our primary goal is to um, make make this part of our clinical culture and have people comfortable having the discussions that we've talked about. Um, and then, um, you know, also to be able to demonstrate both within our institution and to our accrediting bodies that we're about the types of quality improvement and uh, and public health interventions that that uh, are so critical right now. Wonderful, thank you. And hope Karen um, is feeling better soon. Thanks. Lake County Family Practice. Um, I saw a message earlier from Dr. Brown that she may have had a conflict, but I thought that I saw her log in. Um, I will follow up with her. Tri-City Family Medicine. Hi, this is Jennifer Bacci. Uh, there are several of us on today from the uh, UH Tri-City team. Uh, so this came to us from uh, Dr. Carbone, who is a family practice physician um, in the office here. And um, he was kind of the one, um, you know, bringing the whole program forward. So in our area in Lorain County, um, adolescent suicide is like the second leading cause of death. So that, you know, really hit home for us, which really spearheaded us getting involved in this project. Um, I know we also have our behavioral health specialist on the line. She'll probably want to say something. Hi, I'm Grace. Yeah, I'm here. I'm the behavioral health coordinator here at Tri-City. I'm here with Dr. Carbone's medical assistant, who's going to be helping with the data collection and things of that nature, Lindsay. Uh, Dr. Carbone, uh, definitely was very interested the first time he saw this email. He got Jennifer and I involved right away and was ready to get started. Uh, definitely in Lorain County, we have uh, a, a, a real issue with adolescent suicide and rates only increasing. So hopefully we can make this a more uh, relevant thing within UH as well. So hopefully I think I'll go ahead and maybe try and reach out to the ACO and see what we can do, like you mentioned uh, earlier about making this an ongoing thing. Yes, and we're, we are um, happy to help you through that process too and provide information and, and support for that. And, um, you know, we've got until February to work on sustainability with your practice. So I always say we start working on that like day one. So we're happy to do that. <laughs> 